God's gift, salvation, John 3.16, is only available to people who know they're lost and dying. You understand that? We have to be careful about leading people to the Lord that don't think they're lost and don't know they're blind, stumbling through life, and headed for endless personal doom. Jesus, before he shared the good news of the gospel, always made people frightened for their souls. Jesus spoke two for one. You, you know how, you, you know, when you're mixing oil and everything, there's a ratio. Jesus' ratio of heaven to hell was one heaven to hell. He didn't talk about heaven without surrounding it with hell and saying, you're in the dark, you're blind, you're headed to the chasm. But heaven's available. Now, nowadays, we're like this, heaven, and we don't like to talk about hell. And so people don't realize the gift is only available to the, the people who know they're lost and dying. And that only comes when the Holy Spirit convicts them of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Well, Christmas from the divine vantage point, as explained in Luke 1, 78 and 79, in God's word, the Bible should make us see Christ's death was from the beginning only for the guilty, only for the hopelessly stained, only for the helplessly lost. It is in that condition and that condition alone that we can find God's grace. So that's the message of salvation. And what I think about this morning is for the vast majority, I'd say that 99% of us this morning probably have received the gift of eternal life. But you know, Christmas is a great time to explain even why we need to do what we're going to do this morning, and that is that sometimes we get gifts that we don't even realize what we have. Sure. If we were to open salvation, there are many parts. I'm not going to tell you how many because some people are always nervous if I don't finish. But, but I'm going to explain the gift that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if we allow Jesus Christ to open for us all that he's done, it can begin a life of what Luke 1 says, of walking in the way of peace. Do you know, not, you know how to have the greatest life possible? By understanding the gospel. The gospel makes... The gospel turns on the light, and all of a sudden we're not walking in the dark. We see the edge, and we know that we're not going to tumble, that death for us is a doorway, and we don't even, ex whoever lives and believes in Christ doesn't ever die. Their body ends its, its tenting of us. Our occupancy in our body ends, but we never die. And we don't go to limbo, and we don't go to purgatory, None of those are in the Bible, by the way. We go instantly, last Sunday night, that was a great question in the Q&A time, we go instantly and consciously into the presence. As Jesus said to the thief on the cross, today you're with me in paradise. Not tomorrow, not in a few years, or after you bake off all your badness. Today you'll be with me. No, that's what purgatory is. Burn off the, the part of the stuff Christ didn't get to die for on the cross, you got to pay for. Burn off then you get to heaven. It's, purgatory is saying Christ's work on the cross wasn't complete. So what is Christ doing? Well, because of our sin, and now you're going to need your Bible, and by the way, we all get to talk. Everyone's going to say 14 phrases this morning. So some of you have not participated in church a long time. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, how do we open the gift of, of forgiveness? And this is the greatest thing. Did you know nothing matters more someday each of us are going to be on death's door. Unless the Lord returns, every human that's ever lived is going to die, including all of us here. And the one thing you're going to want to be sure you know that you have is forgiveness. That matters more than anything else when you're breathing your last breath. To know that every sin you've ever committed is completely taken care of because you don't want to spend forever paying for your own sin. That's what hell is. Everybody that, it doesn't matter whether you owe a lot or a little, it takes eternity to pay for sin. So if you die with even one sin on you, and no one will die with just one,
because we're sinners by nature and choice and divine decree. You pay for it forever. So what's the greatest part of salvation? Forgiveness. Because of our sin, we're all debtors. Uh, the way God looks at sin is every sin, every tiny little anger, envy, jealousy, impatience, untruthfulness, harshness, or murder, or any, any sin is a debt. It's just it's put in our column. Every sin. Every sin is a transgression of God's law, and he is keeping track of every one of them. It doesn't matter if we thought it, doesn't matter if we felt it, doesn't matter if we did it, doesn't matter if we would have done it if we could, he marks it down. It's just endlessly recorded. You know what's so interesting? We, we're now experiencing a fraction of what God has. Now we have enough storage, you know, computer storage, that, I mean, it's in the, it's beyond terabytes. I don't know what's the... Uh, uh, Ex exabytes or whatever, you know, it's just like we can record everything. Well, that's nothing new. God's been recording everything from the beginning. Every thought, every deed, everything. <laughs> and it's debts to God's righteousness. He's the only perfect one. We're all imperfect. So the desperate need we all have is forgiveness.